Razor's Edge for Rookies. What I'm going to talk to you now about is development cycles. Now, it doesn't matter what kind of nonprofit organization you are. You could be a school, you could be a hospital, a nonprofit, uh, humane society. Whatever it is, chances are you're following the same sort of cycles when it comes to fundraising as any other nonprofit group. And if you can understand where you should go in Razor's Edge with regards to that specific cycle, it'll really help you navigate to what you're supposed to do and where you're supposed to go. All right, so let's start with the most common cycle. Let's take a look at the first of those. And this all begins with the appeal. Now, the appeal is any mechanism that you or your organization use to communicate with your donor base. Now, this is basically anything that is going to cause money to come in, anything that you're going to use to uh, notify your your donor base, anything that you're going to do to interact with the, the general public at large. Let's talk about the common ones here. Now, I thought I'd throw this in. This is sort of a cute little illustration I found. And this is how most people probably feel when they give their name and address away. They feel like, wow, I'm stuck on a mailing list. And a lot of nonprofits make the tragic mistake of getting a name or a donor and then bombing them with mail and just turning around and blasting them with as much as they have. So I would just highly suggest you be selective on who you mail to. Learn how to segment who gets what. And if you can identify the motivation why anybody makes a donation, it will help you be able to really restrict what you send to somebody. So let's talk about the types of appeals real fast. Uh, the first and most common is direct mail. And all of us have had the experience of opening our mailbox and we get a solicitation from somebody. It doesn't matter who it is. Direct mail, by all defaults, will always be the lifeblood of most nonprofit organizations. They, this is where the, the bulk of their revenue is generated from. So, a lot of us call it a summer appeal, a fall appeal, a spring appeal, maybe a year end. We might have all kinds of names for the appeals we send out, but basically an appeal that is sent as a direct mail piece all has the same purpose. We send out a piece of mail, we're hoping for a donation back, whether it's a with a remit, with a check, with a, a credit card number, whatever it might be. All right, the second type that we see real common is a newsletter. Now, a newsletter doesn't necessarily have to mean you're asking for money. A newsletter can be something that you create. You're creating a... Uh, a informative piece about your organization, sort of updating what you, you're doing, maybe the successes you've had, maybe some of the personal interest stories. A newsletter, again, is a cause of disseminating information and in some cases is a result of donations coming back. All right, the next type that's very common among nonprofit groups is an event. A lot of nonprofit organizations hold annual banquets, uh, some do annual golf tournaments. Any type of event where people are paying to participate, um, whether it's a walkathon, whether it's a, you know, a bicycle tour. I mean, I've seen all kinds of events. They they really range uh, in diversity. The most common being a banquet and a golf tournament. Um, these are again mechanisms by which some way, shape, or form you are raising money for your organization. All right, another uh, less frequently known type of appeal is a thing called a phonathon. If you ever watch any of the Jerry Lewis telethons, this is what that is. Basically, people manning phone banks. They're either making calls out, or you have cases where there's a group of people manning phone banks, and whatever reasons it's causing people to call in. It could be a TV show, radio show, uh, whatever it is. That's a phonathon. Okay. Uh, one of the last, most uncommonly known types of appeals is a thing called a cultivation party. Now, any kind of large gift fundraising uh, usually entails a certain amount of wooing, I'll use for lack of a better expression, or cultivating a large donor. Uh, someone that can potentially give a large gift or a large contribution to your organization. And cultivation parties are not something that you typically expect donations immediately from. Cultivation parties are something that you would use as a way to further ingratiate yourself with a pool of people that you're trying to sort of set up for a major ask down the road. So what is an appeal? If you look at this list, basically an appeal is anything that you want to track. Remember, anything that you want to keep track of who you sent something to, who responded, how much this entire thing costs, like for an appeal, you're talking about printing, you're talking about postage, you're talking about design work, you're talking about all that kind of stuff. A cultivation party would have all the other expenses involved. Same thing with an event. Now, the appeal in Razor's Edge allows you to keep track of all of that. Who got it? 
how much it costs, what your return rate was, what your percentage on return, what your cost per dollar raise, all those kind of nifty little tools. Now the appeal is kept here in this little section on the left called records. When you go to the records, you'll notice that right here in this column, right under constituents, gifts, actions, there are campaigns, funds, and appeals. And this is where you will create new appeals, you can modify, you can add expenses to what it was, etc., etc. The step after the appeal is after you've identified what you're going to do as a mechanism to raise money, whether it's a direct mail, a newsletter, you're going to do an event, is identifying who you're going to include. You are going to either create an invitation list, you're going to create a mailing list, you're going to create some kind of list out of your system in Razor's Edge. And where we identify our list for whatever it's going to be is this section here called Query. Once we identify the list, we can save it. And then our next step is what? To send out this mail. So in order to send out the mail, we will go to the mail module here. The mail module has a lot of opportunities to create different types of mailings. We can do things like envelopes. We can do things like labels. We can do things like appeal cards. We can do things like regular letters, good old fashioned quick letters. Now the next step after a mail goes out is what? We receive donations. Now as gifts are brought in, there are two ways that we can enter gifts on a record. One is physically to go to a record, and if we were to open up a record in Razor's Edge, we can add a gift directly to a person's gift tab. You'll notice they have a gift tab here, and this is where you would add your gift. In most organizations, you have a higher gift count and when you're dealing with a number of gifts that you need to process all at once, instead of doing it one at a time on a record, you have a thing called the batch module. And a batch allows you to enter multiple gifts, much like you're doing it on an Excel sheet where you'll have columns of common fields. And after gifts are entered, the next step that you see in a fundraising office is sending out acknowledgments. In order to send a thank you letter, what we do is literally go right back to where mail is. Now we created a mail and sent it out, we received donations, and now we create what's called this, a donor acknowledgement letter. And when we do a thank you letter, um, we will acknowledge on the record that we have sent out a thank you letter, so we keep track of that. And what is the last step after we have gone through all of these processes? We've created an appeal, we've th thought of who we're gonna send it to, we sent the mail out, we received donations, and we sent out acknowledgements. And the last critical part is report our progress. So we go to reports, and in reports is where we will build things like our appeal summaries, our gift detail reports by quarter, by fiscal year, by month, whatever it might be. Another section of reports, it's sort of a cheat and a shortcut to it, is this section called the dashboard, where you can get updated numbers on anything that you have, whether it's a campaign, a fund, or an appeal. So there you have it. That is your typical cycles of a development office.